Greg Swan, a consultant at Ontario's Public Services Health and Safety Association, says moving from a good supervisor to a great safety leader can be more complex than you might think. I sat down with Greg at this year's Partners in Prevention Conference in Mississauga, Ontario to talk more about the challenges supervisors face and get his suggestions for how they can foster a culture of safety. A supervisor's role for safety, it's, it's a hard thing to do because um, they get pulled in so many different directions. They have responsibilities for whether it be production, uh, whatever product they produce, um, and they, they cover all different, uh, an array of different responsibilities, but safety is just something over, over the years we've just tacked on as another responsibility. While the Occupational Health and Safety Act does carry more responsibilities and penalties for supervisors, Swan says the hard part isn't the legislation. Well, of course, the Occupational Health and Safety Act does have some responsibilities under the, uh, for the supervisors, and the, they have charges, of course. If they're found guilty by the Ministry of Labor, a maximum fine of uh, $25,000 uh, per offense and or a year in jail. But, you know, when we look at the risks involved, there's so many. I always forget about the, the legal side. Look at the moral and ethical risks. Um, you know, as a safety professional for about 14 years now, you, you run into people that you meet over the years, and to meet someone that maybe has been involved with uh, dealing with a fatality in their workplace. Forget about the responsibilities of meeting with the Ministry of Labor. Try meeting with a family that's just lost a loved one or severely injured, can't return to their job. Now paychecks become an issue, money becomes an issue. Try and be that supervisor to deal with that on a daily basis going forward or even just that first family meeting or that first employee meeting after the injury. So. I worry more about the, the moral and ethical as the legal, it'll take care of itself. Another way to help supervisors manage their safety responsibilities is to give frontline workers the tools they need to oversee safety when the supervisor isn't there. Swan suggests energizing and engaging workers. But how can supervisors do this? Communication, communication, communication. You know, we've got better over the years with communication in the workplace, but still if you look at HR surveys, organizations that are struggling and going through a strategic planning moment, whatever that looks like, the biggest failure point is always communication well, and recognition. So those two go hand in hand with the supervisor driving change. So communication, how much is enough and how much is too much? Do you want tabletops at their, at their lunch table and just kill them with safety every five minutes? Or are we going to engage them in a little five minute talk every day during a staff meeting or morning stretch time or in construction? They do it during a tailgate talk. So how do we have that constant communication where we make safety an integral role of everything they do, not just, just here or a checkbox for safety?